it's against the law to know something's in a water supply and not do anything to report it or to get rid of it. Our water sampling on the other end, on our tap end, was safe, clean drinking water. Our water supply uh, was used as a dump site and uh, we need it cleaned up. Richard Dewey had a feeling something was in the water. In 2014, he gained information that set in motion a years-long investigation. Now inside one of the pen stops. The snow in here is terrible. Creosote. And we drank out of this for of 70 years before somebody flew in and said, uh-oh. Dewey lobbied to have decades-old garbage removed from the Humber Canal. In 2019, he got his wish. Corner Brook Pulp and Paper's parent company, Kruger, hired environmental specialists back in June to haul up the barrels from the canal. Divers found 74 drums, dating from between the 1930s and 1950s, thought to have once been used to float wooden booms before sinking and being forgotten. The barrels were rediscovered a few years ago by a Deer Lake resident worried about water quality. So we're in Deer Lake where it's a company town. Um, Deer Lake Power and Kruger are a big employer in, on the west coast, Cornerbrook, Deer Lake. Uh, so I've gone up against them guys and tried to hold them accountable. I've gone up against the town of Deer Lake which is a huge employer here. And I've gone up against the provincial government. So three of the biggest employers in this area, I've gone up against to fight for answers. And, uh, you know, I've been beaten up on over, over this and uh, I just want the truth. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at uh, Deer Lake Powers. This is the generating station for the mill in Cornerbrook. Uh, up above it, you'll see the penstocks run from the four bay. That's where we actually drink from. Within a hundred feet of that building were all these drums. And we're down by uh, Deer Lake Power's operation where uh, I came down five years ago this week. One of the employees from the canal came over. Uh, we engaged in a 26-minute uh, conversation. What he told me led to uh, the next five years of me researching uh, what was dumped in our water supply. He made mention that, uh, you know, on inspection at one time on the canal, they lowered the canal lower than, uh, than normal, and they couldn't get their inspection boat uh, up through the uh, junk that came to the surface. Two months before this, I uh, buried my mom with kidney cancer here, uh, and and I was floored that, that this all was happening and, and nobody was doing anything about it or saying anything. It's against the law to know something's in a water supply and not do anything to report it or to get rid of it. I, I can't get my head around how somebody wouldn't do that. What I'm gonna do is I've got this sample taken that was leaching out of the ground up there and I'm going to take a bit of it and I'm going to put it in the water and let's see what comes out of it. Now, no creosote here boys. A couple of days before the cleanup I've been coming back and forth here letting everybody know the status of the cleanup, where they were at with it all. I had an interaction with a couple of uh, staff that were here. Um, they were looking for drums 
I left, went home, and a couple hours later, the RCMP show up and they charged me with mischief. So you weren't on the water, you didn't chain yourself to anything? I didn't chain myself to no equipment. I didn't get involved in any other operation that's going on. I, I might be a lot of things, but I ain't a criminal. And I gotta check with my lawyer now because I, I last time I got arrested, I wanted to file a complaint against them. Uh, for knowing what was in our water supply, not doing anything about it. Three years they've been trying, they've been trying to get the results of water samples taken here. Everything's been covered up or brushed under the rug. Dewey believes the drums in the Humber Canal contained toxic material that has leached into the town's water supply for decades. A closure report from 2019 suggests they were always empty. Uh, the sediment sampling uh, showed all limits uh, below thresholds, uh, so that it was very comprehensive testing that was done, so we expect that that's uh, closes the matter. We're going to set up a meeting after I talk to my lawyer about filing charges against people that knew this was in our water supply. That hasn't convinced Dewey or others in the town that their drinking water is safe. All we're asking is we want answers to questions, and we can't seem to kill it. Welcome to your day. Don't drink the water. It's not fair. If a substance uh, has some amount of, of uh, cancer-causing um, molecules in the, in the substance, even a tiny bit, if we are exposed to that, that we are contaminated, uh, regardless of how small the, the amount is. Now we're down in Pasadena at a contamination yard. Uh, it's a disposal company that disposes of dangerous goods contamination. This is where the drums uh, were sent. You want me to come out and check and see what was going on? Yeah, there, like and that's all, just a follow up on the report uh, of the canal cleanup. That's all it is. They tested it before we started washing it. They, yeah, they, they didn't here. test it. They came here and took samples and stuff off the top of the drums. They're, they say in the report they never tested it. Well, I was here when they come and tested it, took samples off the top of the drums. Cool. So we just came from the uh, clean-out facility in Pasadena and uh, spoke to uh, staff down there. He's describing oil sheens on the drums uh, as they were cleaning them out. Uh, samples were taken. None of that was in the report. And, and that's the questions I've been asking this whole time. Does it concern you at all that it was actually a resident, uh, you know, civilian that had to go looking for, for something in the water? And that it, the town wasn't aware of that to begin with? Nobody would, wouldn't have been aware of it if the elevations of the water wasn't where, where it was to. You know, how many communities you go out and, and dredge canals? That's a workplace. That's a that's, a, that's an operation from Deer Lake Power that um, we would have no reason to be in the canal. And our water sampling on the other end, on our tap end, was safe, clean drinking water. Woke up with hives this morning. Anyway, we've got to go to uh, court. But we'd all like for this to be over. Nine years is a long time. You know, there's a number of questions that somebody should answer. The people here are still suspicious, but Kruger says company management didn't know about any debris in the canal and said it inspects the area regularly for signs of pollution. A 2017 public health study also showed no higher rates of cancer in Deer Lake. Barrels or drums or whatever they're referring to them as in the water supply that had never been used, there was something in them at some point. So what was it and what did the generation before us drink? The mischief charge against Dewey was later dropped, but his fear 
remains. But what what you do to people's minds is another consequence. If you if you make people uncomfortable and worried, that's a negative. That's a cost. You know, just like if you were uh, if you were uh, making them pay more money, or you were you know, or you were harming them physically, you're harming them mentally. You know, by taking away their peace of mind. This is where we're at. I couldn't, I couldn't let it go. I, I had to see this through. I had to see what was up there, and and make sure that it was cleaned up. So, so our grandkids that we're sitting here waiting to see someday, uh, won't have to deal with with uh, with this issue. Anyway, I hope my mom's smiling. <laughs>